Very good. Okay, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for attending the uh, Metastock and Alpha 7 Trading Academy webinar. Today, I'm going to go delve deeper into the rifle charts and go through the components of the rifle charts and how we take price action and use the rifle charts to interpret the price action. And all this is for the goal of being able to get you in and out of trades so you can be profitable and consistent. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jay Yu. Um, I've been around for 16, 17 years actively trading the markets. I have four books out. The latest is Way of the Trade, and that uh, that's published by Bloomberg and John Wiley, and that came out in August of last year. Um, it covers the, the complete methodology plus the, the uh, as it applies to the context of these markets that we're in right now. And I'm sure you all know about the high frequency trading programs uh, and, and, and the endless number of algorithm programs that are out there that have basically choked out the average retail trader. Um, you know, I always say that with the markets, you can't look at the indexes and gauge your performance based on the indexes. Okay, your performance as a trader is really going to is going to be affected materially by the type of climate that the market is trading in, in a macro sense and an intraday micro sense. And it's during those wet climates that you want to be the most active and take the heavier size and then ease up with the breaks. Okay, on the during the dry climate periods, and those wet climate periods are always going to be that first 45 minutes of the market open, and then as the day wears on, as the volume thins out, there's fewer and fewer participants, and when that happens, that's when you come, uh, you have a big target on your back, and you become a victim very easily of, of the apex predators, which are the algorithm programs and the high frequency trading programs. Now, a quick word about high-frequency trading programs. Um, as far as the notion that they provide liquidity, <laughs> it's the complete opposite. Okay, what they do is they will steal. Well, the better word here is kidnap liquidity and then ransom it out for the highest price. The the good thing about uh, high-frequency trading programs okay, is that they do provide some volatility. Um, but most importantly, if you're able to get in, get your shares in before the algos go to work, okay, it can magnify your profits very quickly. Now, one of the pitfalls is letting those profits move and then letting, letting them evaporate again. So it's very important that you have a system okay, that allows you to, to know when a price move it is hit a nominal range or when a price move is hitting, the momentum's hitting the red line, okay, and you got to be taking money off the table. And something that's going to tell you that, hey, if you take some money off the table, you know, how much more support do you have? How much more room could you give this stock? Okay, and all that falls right down to my main tool, the rifle charts. So we're going to go over the rifle charts, um, and I'm also going to talk about the state of your trading, okay, what state you're in right now. And then we have a special offer for attendees. So let's go straight to the rifle charts. On Metastock, this is what the rifle charts look like okay, on, the, um, on the Zenith platform. And it's, based, it's composed of very common uh, indicators. We have our Bollinger Bands. These are the white lines. This is on a five-minute chart. So we have our upper Bollinger Band our 20 period middle Bollinger Band and our lower Bollinger Band. Okay, this is what we call the road map up here. We have our five period simple moving average in yellow. We have our 15 period simple moving average in green. Down here is, is what we call the engine. And these are the stochastics. And we have a fast in yellow and then a slow stochastic in green. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have uh, the 20 band and the 80 band, we have that highlighted. OK, 
day. So when a stock is moving higher, usually you're going to get the Bollinger Band, uh, the stochastics that are going to cross and move up. Okay. When a stock is coming lower, falling lower, then you have the opposite move. Your basic 20 and 80 band signals are this is your overbought area, I'm just oversold area, and this is your overbought area. Okay. And I'm talking very rudimentary, very sophomoric definitions here. So the classic thinking with stochastics is hey, if you if you buy across under the 20 band, okay, and you buy it as it crosses the 20 band, you should get an uptick in the stock to be able to sell into. Vice versa, if you get a slip through the 80 band and cross down, you should be able to short the stock, okay, or you should be selling the stock. Now, if you use just the stochastics alone, as many people have tried, it's not very consistent. And the problem is that the stochastics really doesn't care too much about price because time is a factor as well, which is why you can have a stock that is just moving in a, in a small range and have the stochastics make an oscillation, okay? And then you can have a situation where the range is much larger, all right, and the stochastics may just chop. So you need something else other than stochastics, and that's why we have those moving average charts. 5 and the 15, they give us the idea of the trend, okay, an uptrend or a downtrend. The 15 is always going to lead to 5. So if that 15 is crossed down, that's called a downtrend. If it's crossed up, it's called an uptrend. And then the trading channel, okay, the channel, uh, the room between the 5 and the 15 period moving average. The Bollinger Bands give us a nice idea of what is the nominal upside and the nominal downside. The other thing about Bollinger Bands is very much like an EKG, all right, the Bollinger Bands are going to compress when the range gets tight, which means that you don't want to mess around too much, and then they're going to expand when a trend forms. So the combination of all of these, you put them together, okay, and you end up with the rifle charts. Now, on Metastock Zenith, this is how you set up the, the basic components, the 5, 15 period, simple moving averages. And the stochastics are 15, 3, 3. Bollinger Bands are 20 period, 2 standard deviations. Now, for some of the wider time frame charts, like the 5, well, the 5, well, 5 minute, actually on all the charts, you can add a 50 and a 200 period moving average. Okay. Um, the wider time frame charts are going to have the most effect. All right. On a smaller time frame, one in the five, I pretty much stick to a 200 period moving average. Or else uh, you may not be near that 50 period moving average, but it can also scrunch your chart too. And you can also have too many lines. So these are your basic indicators. Okay. It's, it's very simple. It looks very simple. Um, and that is uh, what it looks like on the uh, on the onset, the tip of the iceberg. Okay, but it's amazing what you can get from the rifle charts, the depth of indicators and um, uh, perspective. Okay, because I also utilize them on uh, smaller to wider time frames. Okay, that's a cumulative effect. So the one minute chart, the five minute chart, fifteen minute chart, sixty minute chart, daily. And those are all used for the intraday, and then you add the weekly and the monthly, which uh, you, 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 you're not going to really use those intraday too much. You'll get a, an idea if they're near any of the bumpers. Now, when I talk about bumpers, I'm talking about the lines up here on our roadmap. So a Bollinger Band is a bumper. The five-period moving average is a bumper. Fifteen-period moving average is a bumper. Okay, so these are bumpers, just like uh, you see in a pinball game. So... On this particular chart, okay, when we add the moving averages and the Bollinger Bands, we end up getting the full rifle chart, all right, and we utilize um, some price, very basic price, price action concepts, the three candle um, uh, reversal candles, which we call market structure highs and market structure lows. So a market structure high is something where you're going to get either the high of the day. Okay, or the low of the day, those are the most powerful. 
All right. However, in a sequence of five or more candles, when you get a high, and I believe for this stock it was the high of the day. All right, it was the high of the day. Uh, so you get a new high, a higher high, and then when you get the lower high, okay, the low of that candle becomes the trigger for the market structure high. So when 64.78 gets taken out, 64.78 gets taken out, I believe the low of that candle is in 64.79. When that gets taken out, it triggers a short. Now, if you go straight by market structure highs, you take the short there and then you trail your stop loss, okay, to the body of the second candle high, okay, or you can go take it all the way up to the, the high of the day or the high of the, the market structure high. Um, when you utilize the, the uh, rifle charts, okay, and you add the rifle charts onto that market structure high signal, then you get something else that's interesting. Now, with the market structure highs, okay, and remember, that triggers underneath the low of this candle. And you see how it makes a quick dive, pops back up, tries to pop back up to the 6470s, all right, um, and then people can get a little nervous here, not take their profits, and stop out. Whereas now, if you add the rifle charts, what that shows you is that it broke through the five, dropped through the 15-period moving average, it made a coil back up to the five-period moving average, okay? But as that five-period moving average, instead of it doing something like this, where the five-period stalls out and goes flat, and then spikes up, and this is what we call a pup breakout with the stochastics cross up. This is a situation where it starts off like the pup, but the five period moving average actually starts to slope down. So you're almost always going to get a bounce or a reversion off that 15 or 20 period moving average. 20 period moving average is a white medium Bollinger Band. Okay, you're always usually going to get a coil off of there. They're going to try to thrust through that five. When they can't hold the candle close above that five, something interesting happens. Now, on this moving uh, market structure high trigger, when it slipped, you got the stochastics to cross down. Naturally crosses down, okay? And this all, this is, uh, you know, a four-year-old could look at this and say, oh, it's, it crossed down and the stock crossed down, fine. This is the part that's the tricky part, okay? With the tricky part here, Whereas with a lot of other systems, they, you know, they, they may give you a static stop. I'll use the stop of the uh, market structure high. Well, if you did that, you would have stopped out. You would have stopped right out, okay? Uh, you know, or use this stop, high of the body, okay? You can, you can use any type of static stop, but I like to use something that's more dynamic, something that breathes. It breathes and moves with the market, and that's what our oscillation indicators are for, uh, our stochastics. Now, notice that when it made the coil back up to test that five-period moving average, what happened? The stochastics was coming down, and then what did it do? It stalled. It stalled because had they thrusted it up through the five-period moving average and closed the candle above there, they would have formed what? Another pup breakout. Just like here, you see how it crosses down? And they spiked it back up. They crossed it back up. So in that same, so in that same uh, pattern, we see that it's starting to slope down. We get the reversion. They get the initial overshoot as the stochastics try to cross up. But what happens? They closed it back down. And when they close it back down, the moving average also closes down. It's, they're basically choking out the air supply. The walls are getting thicker and thicker. And so when this slopes down, that's what we call a mini inverse pup. Okay? And you'll notice that the mini inverse pup re-triggers on that market structure high trigger. Bam. And when that forms, now you're looking for a move towards the next bumper, okay? Well, it forms near the, the uh, 15, 20 period moving average. This is where it bounced before. It collapses, it breaks, and you're looking at a move down towards the lower Bollinger Bands. And you see how that beautifully flows down, okay? It leans down, leans down. You get the overshoots, but no market structure uh, low trigger, okay? And then continues. It may be choppy, but guess what? It continues to go lower and lower. And then when you get your final mini inverse pup through that 20 band, this is where you should be locking your profits, okay? The problem with a lot of traders is they don't, they're not aware that there is a momentum indicator. So when they see this thing tank, they're going to say, yeah, we, you know, awesome, you know, die, 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 and then 
boom, you get the stochastics that coil back up. So this is how you gauge liquidity because the best liquidity to cover naturally is going to be when people are panicking out of their lungs, right? The best liquidity to sell into is when people are trying to buy that stock and they're just chasing the ask. Okay, and that's where the algos can come in and steal all that liquidity and offer it out much lower. Steal that liquidity and offer it out much higher. If you're already short that stock, you're in good hands. But anytime you get an inkling or an instance or, 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 or you know, the, uh, I don't know, the inclination to, to, to cheer yourself on, <laughs> and I know this firsthand so many times, the moment you're like, we, the algorithms are already scooping up that liquidity. So you've got to be on your toes and be selling and, and scaling into the exits. Okay, so this is, this is how the rifle charts play out. And rather than, you know, if we just relied on pure price action using the market structure signals, okay, um, sure, we could have used a, a wider stop and then kind of rode this down and waited for a uh, market structure low trigger. Okay, so you got three red candles, you got your higher low. Now we got to get a break above that higher low, and you notice that higher low doesn't break. Now it's not some coincidence, but notice also how the higher low is right at that 20 period moving average. Okay, it's really uncanny because of these market structure signals. They form right at these bumpers. They form right at these bumpers. So this is how you take advantage of the rifle charts. Okay, uh, You have your one minute mini pup through the 20 band. Now cross up through the 20 band is one thing. When you get a mini pup, that tells you that the bears tried to come in, put, take it down, and they couldn't hold it down, and the bulls are holding the bids. So you have your mini pup, you have your long trigger, and you play, the long, play to the long side. And then with our rules, we have our stinky fives, which is the 64.40 to 60 area. Naturally, you want to sell into that. <coughs> so you're scaling all the way using the five period moving average as a trail stop. Okay, but more so scaling into the stinky fives area okay, as it gets there. I mean, everything can be explained with the rifle charts. Everything can be explained. All right. So let's break it down a little more. Um, Going right back to what, what, what I talked about with, the, with Twitter, okay? Our market structure high is 65.24. That's the new high intraday. Okay, but the trigger, the market structure trigger means that we have to break under the low, <coughs> excuse me, under the low of the higher low candle, 64.78. Okay, so when we break underneath there, that's when your market structure high forms. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when we add the stochastics, you can see how that mini and burst form, pup forms, and it details everything. Okay, well, this is just the momentum indicator. All right? So it gives you an idea, just looking at this, okay, that it's going lower. When you add in the moving averages, okay, uh, when you add in the moving averages, then you actually have something to look at. Then at that point, you can lean on that five period moving average and quantify where your support is if you're short. Same thing on this Twitter chart. We have uh, an initial spike, pullback, and then we notice the five period moving average sloping up. Okay, And on that cl candle close and the slope up, we have the long trigger on the mini pup, five minute mini pup, and notice how from this consolidation and chop area, five period moving average is actually lifting, and now you're getting higher lows, you're getting higher new higher highs, higher, higher lows, okay, as the 15 period continues to rise. And then after this move, you have your market structure high, triggers, counter, counter candle, slips, but it, it doesn't fall under that's 6440. Now, this is the interesting thing. You can have a mini inverse pup that comes all the way down like this. Well, you would expect, you know, a much uh, stronger sell-off here. Okay, and that's the anomaly, or well, that's the problem with stochastics. Stochastics is not going to give you a measure of how much price movement you're going to have. Stochastics is just going to show you the inflection points. Okay, and the triggers. 
So mini and burst pup forms, it sells off, but it still holds that stinky fives area. So when you have something that's buy fading, and this is a buy fade for the most part, five period moving average, yeah, it's coming down and it's crossing down. Okay, but when that stochastics crosses up, it's this thing just flushes right back up. Okay. Now, this stuff here is textbook. Okay, something like this is a little more advanced because obviously when you're starting in the game, you want a foothold and you want something that says, hey, if a mini pop forms, five period moving average rises and it's crossed up, it's a long signal. Okay, and you can apply that same thing here, but this is, once again, this is a situation where there's not much room to the downside. You're in your stinky fives area, five minutes making a mini inverse pop oscillation down. Okay, so you get a full oscillation down, and rather than slip the 20 band, it coils the 20 band. So something like this could be played on the long side. Now, based on just the five minute chart alone, it's not going to give you enough. You add in the one minute, the 15, and the 60, that's going to give you more, more, uh, a bigger perspective, whereas the 15 minute may have been in a mini pop, and the five minute came down, okay, within the backdrop of a, a bullish 15 minute pop. You see what I'm saying? So with the time frames, your shorter time frames are going to move first, and then the reason I call them bumpers is because even though you have your bumpers on the five minute chart. As you get longer in your time frame, wider in your time frames, your 15 minute, your 60 minute, their bumpers are going to be spread out more. And so you may get that mini inverse pump down to a 15 minute support, which then bounces at the same time the five minute bounces and the one minute bounces, and boom, you get a squeeze. Okay? And that just means, you know, taking, uh, taking, multiple time frames into consideration. You know, as much as I want to simplify things, the reality, the reality here is that you got to be willing to put in the time and the effort okay, and the monitoring to be able to catch the exceptions, all right? Not so much the exceptions, uh, the, well, I guess the, the nuances. So, we have our stochast uh, stochastics here. We have our Bollinger Bands. And once again, the Bollinger Bands, they're going to tighten. When they tighten and compress, okay, that tells you that, hey, a, a trend is about to start. In most cases, you want to be real weary of jumping in on these tight Bollinger Bands. All right? You want to wait until, until they start to expand, and then you can step in. And the nice thing about this is, well, you got your mini inverse pup right here. So you wait, you let it pop. And then you get the trigger, and then boom, mini inverse pop, then you take it down on the short side. So a breakout is an up, well, a breakout is the start of an uptrend, okay? Uh, a breakdown is the start of a downtrend. And then you get your downtrend, then you get your uptrend. So on, on, on this Facebook chart, this is an uptrend. And an uptrend simply means that the five period moving average is rising along with the 15 period moving, moving average rising, there's a nice healthy ch trend channel here. There's space between the five and the 15s. Now, when a trend reverses, what happens is the five minute crosses down under the 15 period moving average, okay? And each time they try to break back up through, if it fails, that confirms your downtrend, and that also confirms oftentimes a mini inverse pup that you can play to the downside, bam. So you got your uptrend, you got your downtrend. Now this is also, you'll notice that you know, there's movement here. There's a lot of movement here, okay? Nice movement. This is what we call the wet climate. Like I said, it's gonna be definitely in the first 45 minutes. Sometimes it can last till 11 o'clock, all right? Uh, maybe you get your third reaction past 11, but once you get near the 11.30, 12 o'clock mark, okay, that's when we start to see the uh, the algos and the HFTs take over as the participants thin out, they weed out. And this is the type of climate, the dry climate, you don't want to be watching, you don't want to be playing, okay, because you're just going to end up getting chopped. The, algo, the algorithms, they own this, they own this, okay. You, get, you have a big target on your back. And when I say, uh, you know, the algos and the HFTs, Okay, you can buy 5,000 shares in a wet climate. 
You try to buy or sell 5,000 shares in a dry climate, what happens? The bids will evaporate, okay? The ask will evaporate. And that's what these high-frequency trading programs do. That's what these algorithm program, trading programs do, okay? And keep in mind that, you know, the majority of the high-frequency trading programs are actually run by market makers, all right? And they call them volume participation programs so that stocks don't get too far out of whack from the VWAP. And in a sense, those are good because they allow for the oscillations, that, little, that, that rubber band snapback on a one-minute, 20-band mini pump, okay, that rubber band snapback down on an 80-band, one-minute mini inverse pump. Okay, so those are good. However, if you're on the wrong side, they can be very painful. That's why we have the rifle trust. The stochastics tell you you don't want to chase above that 80 band. Don't chase the 80 band above the 80 band. Okay? Don't short below the 20 band. It's a very basic rule. Now there are exceptions in wet climates when you have perfect storms where you may get the bulk of that move above the 80 band and the bulk of the panic underneath the 20 band. Okay? But in dry climates, you never want to chase. Don't chase your shorts down here. Don't chase your longs up here. If you get a tight constriction on the Bollinger Bands and the moving averages are flat. And when I say flat, they may cross up, but there's no follow-through. They may cross down. There's no follow-through. Okay? That's a consolidation. And that's what you want to stay away from. So as I said, when we take the rifle charts and we put them on all the time frames, our one minute, our five minute, our 15 minute, our 60 minute, then our daily, and then the weekly and monthly. And the weekly and monthly, they only really apply if the stock is trading near any of, the, any of these bumpers. Okay? If a stock is trading near that weekly five period moving average and it's sloping down, okay, now I'm interested because if it rejects there, that sets up a weekly mini inverse pump. One thing to rem remember, though, is that the weekly is a very wide time frame. Okay? The 60-minute is a large intraday time frame. Unless the shorter time frames are coming down, that 60-minute is dormant. Make sure you understand that. Okay? Unless that, even your 15-minute chart, if the five and the one minute stochastics are rising while the 15 is coming down, okay, then that means it's dormant. However, when the five and the one minute finally do come down, what happens? You get the full impact. Bam, 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 bam. You get the full impact of all the time frames. And it, so it comes down hard. And this, this is how you use the wider time frames with a Doppler effect. It's like the weatherman. You know how the weatherman can see a storm front coming, you know, 100 miles away, whereas when you walk out your front door, it's nice and shiny and the skies are clear, nice and sunny and the skies are clear, and the weatherman's saying, hey, there's a, uh, a hurricane coming, <laughs> okay? He's not predicting anything. He's forecasting. That's what the wider time frames do. When they form a mini inverse pup on that 15, Okay, and the five minute cross is up. Well, if it's sloping down, usually it's that five period moving average right there where you're looking to short as the five peters out. And on that cross down, bam, 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 perfect storm. Oh, it's awesome. All right, so once again, this is just your naked candle chart. You can choose to just trade a naked candle chart, okay? Um, to each their own. You know, you can find you can find individual patterns, head and shoulders. Uh, you know, um, uh, what is that? I, you know what? Like I said, I, I like to utilize the rifle charts. So we take that simple naked candle chart, and then when we apply the stochastics, it, it gives us a little more clarity, at least from a momentum point of view. When we add the moving averages, it gives us inflection points, supports, and resistances, and trend. When we put them all together, that's when we get the rifle charts. Okay? And then, once you get the rifle charts down, you can learn your market structure high-low triggers, add your trend lines, okay? And, um, and pretty much interpret everything that's going on. Okay? So, what I want to do now 
is I want to uh, go ahead and play um, a portion of the uh, a portion of the Metastock exclusive Alpha 7 trading video where um, I talk about price action and you can actually see the price action explained along with the rifle charts. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. And here we go. And this is a one minute chart with just the candlesticks. Now what we've done is we've put in horizontal trend lines. As you can see, the top trend line at 59.89 represents the one-minute market structure high. And that is as a result of the big green candle, which is the new high. The second green handle, okay, which is the higher high. And then the red candle, which is the lower high, and then the low of that candle, 59.89, becomes the market structure high trigger. Now, uh, once that triggered, you'll notice a series of one, two, three, four red candles, right? You get the red candles that drop the stock down to 59.64 and coil back up, okay? We have the tweezer bottoms at 59.64. And then the 5975, what that represents is a rolling market structure low trigger. So you take that big red candle bar, the second one, and then the third bar uh, candlestick, I mean, uh, which is the green one, okay, at 59.64, the body low, or the body highs at 59.75. And off that 59.75, above there triggers the one minute market structure low. So with that one minute market structure low with a trail stop at 59.64, and that's, uh, you would take a long at 59.76, and then uh, you, as you can see, the uh, stock takes a spike up, back up through the market structure high trigger at 59.89, and actually spikes back up toward almost close to the highs, okay? So spikes back up to about 60, and then peaks out and comes back down. And as it peaks out, comes back down, it will retest that 59.75, which is the market structure load trigger on the one-minute chart. And as you can see, it, it overshoots it, chops around a bit, coils, chops around, but it pretty much hangs out around there, which brings us to where we are now, currently trading on the stock. Now notice how Dish is kind of chopping flat, but but it's still under that 59.75. So you're starting to notice that the bears are trying to hold the price down. Okay, they're trying to kind of smother it down here to prevent a spike back up to the market structure low trigger. And notice the leans right here. Look at that. Bam. They, so, they lean it right back down through the 59.64. And what that does is that negates the tweezer bottom. And all the people who bought there, they panic. And that's how you get that very fast panic sell-off. But now we come towards another predicament here. <clears throat> the 59.60, the 59.50, and the 59.40 represent the Stinky Fives range. Correct. It's 59.60, 59.50, 59 59.40. So when you get a fast sell-off, okay, a, a real quick rug pull, like we saw oh, about 30 seconds ago, you'll notice how they spiked it back up or tried to through that 59.60 area. Um, and then it, it popped and the bears came in a little harder to close that candle down. And now we're in the 59.50, uh, the 59.60 stinky fives area, and then 59.50 to 59.40 stinky fives area. These are these are not uh, easy levels to break on one shot, okay? Unless you have a perfect storm breakdown, um, unless you're in a wet climate, a very wet climate. But either way, you're still going to get it tested. Like right now, look at that. 
where they snap coil it right back up to the 59.62. And until that one minute candle closes, anything's possible. But you know, notice notice how how smoothly the bears held that 59.75 resistance area. Okay, they they kept each one minute candle. They pretty much capped it out, and look how smoothly they just hold it down. Right here. Look at that. Now that's that's very, very smooth. So we get the lean down through the 5960 area. We always, well, most of the times, you're going to get some type of a snapback attempt. And then when they can't hold above that area, guess what? Welcome to the stinky fives range. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, it's like, um, kind of like the twilight zone. Okay. Um, you're pretty much going to be stuck in limbo for a while from the 5960 to 5950 to the 5940. Now, of course, there's always going to be exceptions to the rules, but for the most part, Whenever you get a hard, fast lean that slices through these levels, you always want, if you're short, you always want to be taking profits, scaling down into the liquidity, into the sell-off. Because far too many times you get the overshoot and then the hammer attempts right there. So the 59.65 um, the 59.75 was that was just a very nice looking um, resistance. It, it paid paid real good attention to that one minute rolling market structure low. Okay, now this market structure high of up here was based on the high of the day. That carries a lot more weight. It carries a lot more weight. This market structure low here, well, this is obviously not the low of the day, but when you're looking at a series of red candles, all right, and like I said, when you get three or more, but the more you get, all right, and especially when something that comes off a market structure high of the day, then then you can uh, you know you can pretty much track it. I mean, you can pretty much track the market structures on a one-minute chart all day long. Just make sure that you have a significant number of candles that precede the market structure low. So, you know, you don't want to look at something like this and say, oh, hey, this is a market structure high, okay, because basically, um, you know, you don't have too many candles right there, all right? All right here, you know, you, you, know, you could say, hey, this is a market structure high, Okay, but also you got to kind of keep an eye on the range. And once again, when, when these things are making market structure highs or lows, okay, you want something tight with a three candle combination. You know, so new high, higher high, higher low. Bam. Okay, new, now of the rolling range, a new low, lower low, higher low, bam. See how that works? All right. And you could even go so far as to use something like this. Hey, new high, higher high, lower, higher high, lower high, you know, bam. Okay. But like I said, um, when you actually have something where you have a bigger number of candles or it's at the high or the low of the day, that carries more cloud. <coughs> so... Now we go back to the Stinky Fives range where Dish is trading, and you can you can see it's just kind of chopping and you know, chopping around here. Now there's this 59.40 test of Stinky Fives lower range, and here's a quick sell off here now to the 59.31. Now the question is, what well, did they break that range on that lean? All right, and the only way you can really tell that. It is to let the candle close and see how the next candle plays out. Now keep in mind that we're just using the naked candle charts here, just 
candle charts and just gauge and price action with trend lines. So I do want you to ask, well, you know, Jay, I understand the concept of stinky fives and stuff like that, but I mean, you know, if I took a short, you know, should I have covered everything? Okay, or could I, could I have maybe covered some of it and still kind of ride the rest down? And that's a very valid question. Now you can always say, well, you know, I, I got a market structure high here, okay? I didn't get stopped out because the stop out is going to be the high. Basically the high of that uh, higher, or the lower high candle, I mean, I'm the higher high candle, okay? Or, you know, or, uh, or uh, and then, let me add one more thing. On a market structure low, it's going to be the low of that candle. So when these market structures break, you'll get your stops, trust me. All right? But until then, you're still in on the short. So notice how that 59.64 tweezer your bottom, okay? The low of that rolling market structure low, when that broke, look how, look how the panic comes in and collapses. And then they can't break back above. So we're in the stinky fives range. We overshot down to the 59.40. Notice how it, it leaned down, it's coiled back up, but each coil gets a little smaller, right? Each coil gets a little smaller. So naturally, the inclination is to say, well, hey, this is just going lower and lower. Let me jump in and take a short down here. But then you always have to go back and look at these candles, and when you get three or more candles in the same direction preceding okay three or more candles you always got to be a little careful about jumping in face first into a short because what can happen that's right you can get a market structure low in order to get a market structure low market structure low is a three candle combinate uh, three candle um, formation so all you need are th uh, three red candles and then a fourth green candle, and bam, if you chased it, <clears throat> you can end up getting squeezed because you walk right into a market structure low. On the flip side, you're also back into that stinky fives area. In one sense, it's contained, okay, because stinky fives levels, you're usually not going to get a spike clear through the 5960 area, which is the upper range. Plus, if you did do your tracking correctly and you put in your trend lines, okay, you shouldn't be too scared because you know 5965 was a tweezer bottom and a market structure low stop. Okay, when that stop triggered, what happened? Stop collapsed. And then you also see how beautifully they held they held that 5975. <laughs> They literally just con subconsciously, so so obviously, okay. So you know where your resistances are, but the question is, you know, what what would have prevented you perhaps from shorting down here? And these are the questions you've got to ask yourself. Is there something that's going to help you kind of gauge when to trade? favors a short as opposed to favoring perhaps a long, not going just only by the but by the candles and the market structures, okay, but you know, some type of a uh, a tachometer, so to speak, right? So that you know if the engine is getting towards that red line, you know that the momentum is about to peak out or exhaust and you don't want to get in when you're near or at that red line because it's very easy for a reversal to kick in right okay so these trend lines we just put in represent the market structure low right new low lower low higher low higher that candle 59.42 place your line okay and that's 
right near 5940, which is a stinky fives lower range. Okay, and this is your stinky fives range right here. And then we marked the low of that second candle, 5927, because if you play a market structure low long, okay, your trail stop is going to have to be 5926. Now, the thing is, it's easy to look at this thing and just go by the textbook definition, hey, well, I'll take a stop here. Well, look at these guys. Look at these guys when they say, I'll take a stop at 59.63, one tick below 59.64, right? Well, the problem is you're not the only one. And so when it does tick, what happens? It collapses very fast. So that's why you have to kind of, uh, what you have to anticipate ahead of time. First of all, you have to know ahead of time, hey, this is a stop. Secondly, you have to anticipate whether it's going to break or, or the probabilities of it breaking. Okay? And thirdly, whatever you did hold to the long side, well, you already you got yourself a nice little spike here. You should already have been taking some money off the table. And all of those things are not going to be found simply by price action and trend lines. And this was the reason for the need for the rifle charts, because I asked the same questions, the same questions you should be asking just as well. Is there something that's going to tell me, hey, you know, flash me a little warning? Hey, this thing is likely going to break 59.64. Is there something that's going to tell me that's a nice little bounce? Okay. Should I be taking some profits here or could it go much higher? Okay. Where am I? Is this thing still oversold or, or, or you know, are we nearing the top of this bounce? See, when you sell off 59, uh, you know, stinky fives levels, 59.40, it overshoots. Oh, wow, well, should I jump in and show, oh, well, well, here's a market structure low. Should I be going long? Should I be taking some money off the table? What's going on? Now, look at that, 59.42, market structure low. All you need is a tick under there, 59.41, and what that does is that's going to abs uh, absolve the uh, – market structure low, that gets, listen to me, that gets the guys who went long here, 59, 59.43, that gets them nervous. So some of them start to panic out already because they don't want to sit in this thing if the market structure low gets completely taken out. And the way it gets taken out is what? What price would that be if 59.27 breaks? Now think about it. You know, if you're a buyer, you're jumping in and you're jumping in and you're scaling in shares. The lowest point, 59.27, that's the best price you could have gotten. So anything below there, and you're underwater. And extrapolate that across however many participants. And don't forget, most of the times you're fighting the algos that are already pre-programmed to recognize these levels. So, yes, the one minute peaks out, comes back down, overshoots the market structure low trigger, and this is really a this is really the precautionary stop here, okay? And this, if this breaks, is definitely a stop, a stop. But once again, remember, you're not the only one that's in this trade. Okay, so you're not the only one that's going to be taking a stop. It's going to be a madhouse, a rush to the exits. The movie theater is on fire, and there's only one exit door. See, so you have to think ahead of time. And you can only think ahead of time if, first of all, you know what you're looking at. You, you, you have your levels. You know what the price action is, and you're aware of these inflection points and these price levels. Knowing is the first part, okay? Then you have to be able to game plan this thing. 
taking a long here and then worrying if this thing is going to crack here, if that's just surface level, the depths mean that in order to, well, in order to interpret the depths or work in a, a lateral way of thinking, you're going to need more information. You need the rifle charts. If they're going to give you a better uh, visual, as, as we will see shortly, a better visual of, of the interpretation of this price action. Now, okay, guys. So, anyway, <clears throat> I'm not going to beat it into the ground. Um, I hope that you guys understand uh, what I mean when I'm talking about market structure highs and market structure lows. Uh, one thing I want to clarify is this is a five-minute chart on DISH. Okay, and these are the one-minute charts. All right? So the five-minute charts give you a, a wider perspective. I have a five-period moving average. So even when the one-minute made a market structure low and bounced back up, it, it met resistance at the one-minute 20-period moving average. Also, I don't even have to look at a chart. I can tell you right off the bat, 59.60 is going to be a resistance. Why? Because it's a stinky fives area. On top of that, we have the five-minute, five-period moving average that was also a resistance. And when that, when that rejects, that forms another mini inverse pop. All right, so this is a breakdown of DISH. And once again, notice how I said that 59.27, that was the market structure low. All right, remember there's a difference between a market structure low, which is a low, and then a market structure low trigger. So you have your market structure low down here, 59.27, okay? It's a three candle, it's a three candle pattern. Okay, so you got your new low, lower low, higher low, bam. Okay, so above 59.42, the high of this green candle, that's your long trigger. You if you take it long, understand you have enough room to these bumpers. You have enough room to that five minute, five period moving average bumper. Stinky fives there. You have enough room. Doesn't mean it can't bust through, but if you are already aware that, hey, I'm long 59.43, you know, 2,000 shares, I know I got to be scaling out if it gets near that 59.60 area. Could it go higher? It could. However, the problem is I've got resistance, 5-minute five, 5, stinky 5s, and the 1-minute 20-period moving average. Plus, it's in an overall downtrend, which is a 5-minute inverse pop. Okay? So that's why we exit out. Now, notice what happens when you break under that market structure low trigger. As you can see, once 59.26 cracks, this thing collapses, 59 down to 59.12. Okay? Same thing as when it cracked. 59.64, it collapsed. So the point is, be aware and have the tools that are going to let you be aware. Okay, so now I want to talk about the essence of state. What is the state of your trading right now? All right, how is it? Crappy? <laughs> okay, uh, it's not directly linked to your profit and loss. All right, everyone thinks that your profit and loss, your PL, is the measure of your performance. Well, yeah, that's on an outside level. That, that's on a surface level, all right? Because, you know, let's be realistic. Let's be honest here. You know, there are times, I'm sure, where you've made money in a stock where you realize maybe you held it too long, you closed your eyes, you just walked away, and by some miracle, it came back, you made money. But all that is is a ticking time bomb, okay? Uh, a well-managed loss trumps a poorly managed win. Got to keep that in mind. Now, when you're in a state where you're evolving, okay, that means that you're 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 growing, all right. You take each each stop literally in a clinical sense, okay. Your wins, you you, you may get excited. Everyone, you know, when you, everyone gets excited over wins, but the reality is, they all. You know, it, it's all, they're all small pieces, okay, small parts of a long road. Evolution starts with the adversity and the struggle and challenge and then overcoming them, okay. And what most traders fall into is <clears throat> a state of stagnation where things may work one day and then they flunk horribly the next day um, and then they may go for a, 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 a series of days or weeks where things aren't working. And then 
the next thing you know, you tell yourself, hey, this market, there's something wrong with this market, and uh, you know, we're just in a real bad cycle. Okay, so it's easy to fall into the stagnation and then erosion, then degradation. Okay, and I'm not just talking about you know, I mean, I'm talking about like de degrading yourself every day. Ah, uh, Jay, you freaking idiot. All right, um, understand that you know the state that you're in is going to have a material impact naturally on your trading as well. Okay, obviously we want to be in a state of evolution where we're enlightened, okay, and we grow and we improve. And even losses, okay, as long as they're managed well, <coughs> as long as they're managed well, they are all part of the game. And then you take your performance and you spread it out, you know, to a monthly basis, okay. Um, you spread it out and are you continuing to grow and adapt? Okay, or are you stuck in a stagnant trap, no flow, standstill, you know, frustrate, frustrating and directionless uh, state? Okay, or are you are you doing worse? You know, are you eroding here? Okay, in fact, you know every you feel like the market's against you, and every trade you make, the market's got you. You're all you're chasing your longs. Okay, as soon as you get in, you may get an up couple upticks, and then they rug pull it on you. You're chasing your, your reverse and you're chasing it short, down ticks a little bit, and then they flat out reverse it on you. They are getting chopped like that. And keep in mind that all it takes, okay, all it takes is one spark. Okay? It, throughout this webinar today, if anything made sense to you, if it made sense to you and you think that it's a tool that you could use but you want to learn more about it, Okay, because we have a full training course, okay, four-level course that goes into teaching you not just the basics but the nuances and most importantly the applications in this current market. Okay, and these aren't five-year-old stagnant videos. Okay, this is stuff that I apply every single day. Okay, we're taking into account the lowest common denominator. All right, playing scalps, playing the algos, okay, playing with the HFTs. If that's what this is. That's the market that we're in right now. And it's only going to get thinner. Okay, however, that also means that the wet climates are only going to get stronger. But the dry climates, man, they're just going to get thinner and thinner. Now, I want you to answer this question. What is success? When you look at all the pictures here, right, what is success in your mind? A victory? A win? Knockout? Okay, what is success? Now, if you answer it on a, uh, on a surface level, okay, you may say, hey, it's the victory, it's, the, uh, it's profit, it's just blah, 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 whatever. Okay? No, success is a byproduct. Success is a foregone effing conclusion. Okay? It's a, a foregone conclusion. It's a byproduct that is the result of the process. Okay? This is where it all lies. The process, being able to work your way up through the adversity, through the different market climates, through the different market paradigms, and adapting on a day-to-day -day basis to eventually okay, break ground or break the surface. And this byproduct is going to be Profits, consistent profits, and that's success. Success is a byproduct. Okay, you know, you know, boxers, you know, they say, you know, for every minute in the ring, it takes a thousand minutes of training. Okay, for that one vic, for that one minute in the ring. Do you understand? So the victory is simply a byproduct. It's the process. It's the training camps. Okay, it's the uh, you know, the training. That's what makes, that's what allows you to evolve and achieve success. Okay, so you make $950 in under 30 minutes. All right, you may think of that as success, but that is actually the byproduct. These are the underlying skill sets that you need. Trade sequence 
familiarization, you know, familiarization with the stocks, uh, monitoring it with the spy, your plan A, plan A, B, setups, mark switch high, low, sneaky five, sneaky two fifties, pacing, uh, pacing, okay, correlation, divergence, divergence, five one minute rifle chart applications. That's just the five and the one, okay. Risk probability assessment, the risk reward dance, okay. Specialization, all right. If you do specialize on this particular chart, be it Facebook, Twitter, Apple, Yahoo. These are all the underlying skill sets and templates. They have to be juiced up in order for you to hit success or your byproduct. And Alpha 7 Trading has everything together for you. If you have, if you have the commitment, okay, then we can help you. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this webinar. Um, here's an offer from Alpha 7. Okay, if you like this webinar, uh, we have uh, some free trading courses as well that you can go ahead and sign up for. Just uh, visit alpha7trading.com, okay, and just register. And it's 100% free. You know, take from it what you can, what you want. If you want to delve into it even more, okay, into a more customized program, then uh, then our trading courses are also available. And for a limited time, okay, you have access to 10% uh, off if you purchase level one, and then for two, three, and four, if you use the coupon code Meta 20 Met for your for your one year Meta stock subscription. Okay, data is not included. And this is for new and existing Meta stock customers. <coughs> okay, gang. I want to thank you all for coming out today. Uh, I know it was a pretty uh, choppy day today. Um, I hope that you are able to take the rifle charts, take them with you, and um, you know, experiment with them. You have you have the setups, you have the uh, indicators all on your platform, and you know when you get to a point where you know what the stuff's work, the stuff's working, but I'm not finding it so consistent. I need to know a little more. I need some more training on this stuff. All right. Come see us. And thank you very much. And that will conclude tonight's.